Hey everyone, I'm Liz Ferry and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how I made these five different little jack-o'-lantern appliques out of crochet. Some things you'll need for this tutorial are a crochet hook, I'm going to use a size E, a pair of scissors, a yarn needle, some stitch markers, and you'll need yarn. I'm going to use this orange called Pumpkin from Red Heart Super Saver, and I'll use this green called Patty Green, also from Red Heart Super Saver. You can also find the pattern for this project in my Ravelry store at the link in the description below. Now let's begin the project. Let's begin with the first style of jack-o'-lantern. I'm going to begin my work by making a slip knot, then I'm going to chain one for the foundation chain, and chain two more to count as the first stitch. So I'm going to mark that chain with my bobby pin. Then into the third chain from the hook, I'm going to double crochet. Now into the same stitch, I'm going to single crochet four times. Then I'm going to double crochet two more times into the same stitch. So here's what we have so far. Now I'm going to chain two to count as the first stitch of the next row. I'm going to mark that as the first stitch with my bobby pin. Then I'm going to turn the work. Now I'm going to double crochet into the fourth stitch from the hook. Next, I'll chain five to create the first eye. Skip the next stitch and single crochet into the next two stitches. Now chain five more to create the next eye. Skip the next stitch, and then double crochet into the last two stitches of the row. And here is what we have so far. Now I'm going to chain three to count as the first stitch of the next row. Mark that stitch with my bobby pin, and then turn the work. Now I'm going to treble crochet into the fifth chain from the hook. To treble crochet, I'm going to yarn over two times pull up a loop into the fifth stitch from the hook, pull through two, pull through two, and pull through two. Now I'm going to work into the first chain five. Into that chain, I'll double crochet one, and single crochet two. Now to make the nose, I'm going to chain two. 
Now I'll mirror the same stitches that I did into the other eye. So I'll single crochet two and then double crochet one. And then treble crochet into the last two stitches of the row. And here's what we have so far. Now to begin the next row, I'm going to chain three to count as the first stitch. Mark that as the first stitch and turn the work. Next, I'm going to double crochet into the sixth stitch from the hook. Now I'm going to chain two. I'm going to skip the next two stitches and then I'm going to double crochet two times into the chain two space. Now I'll chain two, skip two again, then into the next stitch I'll double crochet. Then I'll chain three and slip stitch to the last stitch of the row. Now I'm going to slip stitch all the way around to give it a nice clean edge. I think I ended up doing about 28 slip stitches here. And then I slip stitch to the first stitch of the row to end the row. Then I cut off the yarn and I'm going to pull my tail to the back of the work. And then sew in the ends. Now I just need to add the stem and the leaf and the vine at the top of the head. But I'm going to set this aside for now and show you how to make all of the other styles. The second style of jack-o'-lantern is really similar to the first, except it's a little bit bigger. So I'm going to begin with a slip knot, then I'll chain one for the foundation, and then chain two more for the first stitch of the row. And I'll mark that chain as the first stitch of my row using my bobby pin. Now into the third chain from the hook, I'm going to double crochet, Then I'll double crochet two more times into the same stitch. So here's what I have so far. Now I'm going to chain two to create the first stitch of the next row. Mark that chain with my bobby pin and turn the work. Now into the third chain from the hook, I'm going to double crochet. Then into the next two stitches, I'm going to single crochet two times. And into the last stitch of the row, I'll double crochet two. Now I'm going to chain two to create the first stitch of the next row. Mark that as the first stitch with my bobby pin and turn the work. Into the fourth stitch from the hook, I'll double crochet.
And now to create the first eye, I'm going to chain 5. Then I'll skip the next stitch and single crochet into the next two stitches. Now to create the next eye, I'll chain 5 again, skip the next stitch, and double crochet into the last two stitches of the row. And here is what we have so far. Now to begin the next row, I'm going to chain 3 to count as the first stitch. Mark that as the first stitch using my bobby pin, and turn the work. Into the fifth stitch from the hook, I'm going to treble crochet. Now I'm going to double crochet one, and single crochet two into the first chain five space. Now to create the nose, I'm going to chain two. Then I'll mirror what I did on the other side, and I'll single crochet 2 and double crochet 1 into the next chain 5 space. Then I'm going to treble crochet into the last 2 stitches of the row. To begin the next row, I'm going to chain 4 to count as the first stitch. Mark that chain as the first stitch, and turn the work. Now I'm going to treble crochet into the seventh stitch from the hook. Next I'll chain 2, skip 2 stitches, and then double crochet 2 into the chain 2 space. Then I'll chain 2 more, skip 2 more, treble crochet into the next stitch, and then I'm going to skip 1 more and work into the last stitch of the row. Into that stitch I'm going to double treble crochet, which means I'm going to wrap my yarn around my hook 3 times. Pull up a loop in the last stitch, pull through two, pull through two, pull through two, and pull through two to finish the stitch. And here's what we have so far. Now I'm going to chain one to count as the first stitch of the next row. Mark that stitch with my bobby pin, and turn the work. Now into the third chain from the hook, I'm going to single crochet. Then I'll single crochet two times into the chain two space. Into each of the two middle double crochets, I'm going to single crochet. Single crochet two times into the next chain two space. I'll single crochet into the treble crochet stitch. Then I'm going to chain one and slip stitch into the last stitch of the row and I'll mark that with my bobby pin. Now I'm just going to finish by slip stitching all the way around. I did about 33 slip stitches here. Then I slip stitched to the first stitch of the row, cut off my yarn, and I pulled the tail to the back of the work. Now I'm going to set that aside, and I'll show you how to make the third style. I'm going to begin with a slip knot, then I'll chain one for the foundation chain. Chain two more to count as the first stitch of the row. Mark that stitch as the first stitch using my bobby pin. Then I'll double crochet into the third chain from the hook. And now into the same stitch, I'm going to double crochet two more times. Now I'm going to chain two to count as the first stitch of the next row. Mark that chain as the first stitch. Turn the work. 
then into the fourth stitch from the hook, I'm going to double crochet. Then I'll single crochet into the same stitch. Now into the next stitch, I'm going to do the reverse of that. So I'm going to single crochet and then double crochet into the same stitch. Then I'll double crochet into the last stitch of the row. And here's what we have so far. Now I'm going to chain two to count as the first stitch of the next row. Mark that stitch with my bobby pin and turn the work. Now I'm going to chain five more to create the eye. I'm going to skip the next stitch and then single crochet into the next two stitches. Now I'll chain five to make the next eye. Skip the next stitch and double crochet into the last stitch of the row. And here is what we have so far. Now I'm going to chain one to count as the first stitch of the next row. Mark that as the first stitch, turn the work, and now into the first chain five space, I'm going to single crochet three times. Now I'm going to chain two to create the nose. Into the next chain five space, I'm going to single crochet three times. Then I'm going to single crochet into the last stitch of the row. And here's what we have so far. Now I'm going to chain one to count as the first stitch of the next row. Mark that chain as the first stitch with my bobby pin and turn the work. And now I'm going to single crochet into the fourth stitch from the hook. Then I'll single crochet into the next stitch. And now I'll create the first tooth. To do that, I'm going to create a pico, so I'm going to chain three and then slip stitch into the third chain from the hook. Now I'm going to single crochet two into the chain two space. Then I'm going to create another pico to make another tooth on the other side. So chain three, slip stitch into the third chain from the hook. And then I'll single crochet into the next three stitches, skipping the last stitch. And here is what we have so far. Now I'm going to create the lower jaw. I'm going to chain six. Then I'm going to create a pico to make another tooth. So I'm going to chain three and slip stitch to the third chain from the hook. Then I'm going to chain six. Then I'm going to skip all the stitches of my previous row turn the work, and single crochet into the last stitch of the row. Now I'm going to chain one to count as the first stitch of the row. Mark that stitch and turn the work. Now into the first chain six space, I'm going to single crochet one, double crochet one, treble crochet two, double crochet one, 
and single crochet one. Then I'm going to single crochet once under the pico. Now I'm going to do the same thing but reversed into the second chain six space. So single crochet one, double crochet one, treble crochet two, double crochet one, and single crochet two, Now I'm going to slip stitch into each stitch all the way around. I slip stitched about 30 all the way around. Then slip stitch to the first stitch of the row. Now I'm going to move that end to the back of the work and then sew in my ends. So now I'm going to set this aside and I'll show you how to make the next one. I'm going to begin my next pumpkin by making a slip knot, then chaining one to count as the foundation chain. And chain two more to count as the first stitch of the row. I'll mark that stitch with my bobby pin. Then into the third chain from the hook I'm going to double crochet. Now into the same stitch, I'm going to single crochet two times, and then into the same stitch again, I'm going to double crochet two times. So here's what we have so far. Now to begin the next row, I'm going to chain two to count as the first stitch. I'm going to mark that as the first stitch of the row. And now before I turn the work, I'm going to chain three, then I'm going to make a pico, so I'll chain three more, and then slip stitch to the third chain from the hook. Then I'm going to chain two more. Now I'm going to turn, so now I'm going to skip the next stitch, and I'm going to double crochet into the next two stitches. And now with the pico turned in towards the chain space, that's going to create the first eye. Now to make the next eye, I'm going to turn, chain two, then I'm going to make another pico, so chain three and slip stitch to the third chain from the hook. Now I'm going to chain three more, then I'll turn, skip the next stitch, and double crochet into the last stitch of the row. And again with the pico pointing down towards the chain spaces, that creates our row of eyes. Now to begin the next row, I'm going to chain four to count as the first stitch. Mark that chain with my bobby pin, turn the work, and now I'm going to single crochet into the first chain three space. Into the first pico, I'm going to single crochet, then I'll single crochet two into the first chain two space. Now to create the nose, I'm going to chain three. And now I'm going to mirror my stitches into the other eye, so single crochet two into the next chain two space, single crochet into the pico, single crochet into the next chain three space, and now double treble crochet into the last stitch of the row. To double treble crochet, I'm going to wrap my yarn around my hook three times. Then I'll pull up a loop into the last stitch of the row, pull through two, pull through two, pull through two, and pull through two. So here is what we have so far. 
Now to begin the next row, I'm going to chain two to count as the first stitch. Mark that with my bobby pin as the first stitch of the row and turn the work. Now I'm going to single crochet into the fourth stitch from the hook. Then I'll single crochet into the next two stitches. Now I'm going to skip the next stitch and single crochet two times into the chain three space. Now I'm going to skip this next stitch and single crochet into the next one. And now I'm going to create a tooth by making another pico. So I'm going to chain three and slip stitch into the third chain from the hook. Then single crochet into the next two stitches and double crochet into the last stitch of the row. And here's what we have so far. Now I'm going to create the bottom part of the mouth. To do that, I'm going to chain 10. Then I'm going to create another pico, so I'm going to chain three and slip stitch into the third chain from the hook. Now I'm going to chain three. And now I'm going to turn. Then I'm going to skip all of the stitches of the row and slip stitch into the last stitch of the row. And here is what we have so far. Now I'm just going to slip stitch in each stitch all the way around. I ended up with about 31 slip stitches here. Then I'll slip stitch into the first stitch of the row, cut off the yarn, and then bring the end to the back of the work. And then I'll sew in my ends. And now I just have one more to show you guys, so I'm going to put this aside and show you that last one. I'm going to begin my last pumpkin with a slip knot, chain one for the foundation chain, and chain two more to count as the first stitch of the row. I'll mark that chain with my bobby pin. Then into the third chain from the hook, I'm going to double crochet. Now into the same stitch, I'm going to single crochet two times. Then into the same stitch, I'll double crochet two times. Now I'll chain two to count as the first stitch of the next row. Mark that chain with my bobby pin. Now before I turn the work, I'm going to create a pico. So I'm going to chain three, and then slip stitch into the third chain from the hook. Now I'm going to chain eight, then I'm going to turn the work, I'm going to skip the next stitch, and slip stitch into the next two stitches. And now with the pico pointed in, that's going to create the first eye. Now I'm going to turn and into the chain eight that I just made, I'm going to single crochet. Then I'm going to create another pico for the other eye. So I'm going to chain three and slip stitch into the third chain from the hook. Then I'll single crochet again onto the chain eight. Now I'm going to chain eight more to make the second eye. Now I'll turn, skip the next stitch and double crochet into the last stitch of the row. And here is what we have so far. Should have two eyes that are pointing in the same direction. Now I'm gonna chain four to count as the first stitch of the next row. And I'll mark that chain with my bobby pin. And then turn the work into the first chain eight space. I'm going to single crochet four times. Mm -hmm. 
Then I'm going to chain 3 to make the nose. Then single crochet 4 into the next chain 8 space. and double treble crochet into the last stitch of the row. And now here is what we have so far. Now I'm going to chain two to count as the first stitch of the next row, mark that stitch with my bobby pin, and turn the work. Next I'll single crochet into the fourth chain from the hook. Then I'll single crochet into the next two stitches, now I'm going to skip the next stitch and double crochet into the chain 3 space. Now I'm going to chain 3 to create the mouth, and then double crochet one more time into the chain 3 space. Now I'm going to skip the next stitch, and then I'm going to single crochet into the next three stitches of the row. And then I'll double crochet into the last stitch of the row. So here is what we have so far. Now I'm going to chain one to count as the first stitch of the next row. Mark that stitch with my bobby pin. and turn the work. And now into the third chain from the hook, I'm going to double crochet one. Then I'm going to double crochet into the next two stitches. Now I'm going to skip the next stitch and single crochet three times into the chain three space. Now I'll skip the next stitch and double crochet into the next three stitches. Now I'm going to chain one to count as the last stitch, and then I'll slip stitch to the last stitch of the row. Now I'm going to slip stitch in each stitch all the way around until I get back to the beginning of the row. I ended up slip stitching about 31 times, Then I slip stitched to the last stitch of the row, cut off my yarn, pulled the tail to the back of the work, and sewed in my ends. And this is the last one. So next I'm going to show you how to add the stem, and if you want you can also add a leaf or a vine, it depends on the look you want. So let's go ahead and put this one aside, and I'll show you how to make a couple of different styles of stem. So here are all of the different types of jack-o'-lantern applique that I've made. Next, I'm going to show you how to add a stem, leaf, or vine onto each pumpkin. Let's start out with this little guy. I'm going to be using my green yarn for this. To begin with, I'm going to be working into these five middle slip stitches at the top center of the head. Using my green yarn, I'm going to pull up a loop on one side of the top of the head into the back loop of the first of the five slip stitches at the top of the center of the head. So into this stitch right here. Now I'm going to chain one, and then I'm going to pull up a loop into the remaining four back loops of the stitches at the center of the head. Now I have five loops on the hook, so I'm going to pull a loop through all five of those stitches. Now to make the foundation chain of the stem, I'm going to chain 3, then I'll make a pico, so chain 3, and slip stitch into the third chain from the hook. And here's what we have so far. 
Next, I'm going to chain 2 to count as the first stitch. And then onto these last 3 chains, I'm going to single crochet. Now I'll slip stitch into this 5th stitch that I already worked into when I pulled up my 5 loops. And then I'll cut off the yarn, and bring the tail to the back of the work. Now I'll sew in the ends. As you can see, this stem sort of leans to this direction. Next, I'll show you how to make a stem that leans to the other side. I'm going to begin the next stem the same exact way, by working into the back loops of the five slip stitches that are at the top center of the head. So I'm going to pull up a loop in the first of the five stitches into the back loop, so that will be this stitch right here. I'll pull up a loop and then chain one. Now I'll pull up another loop into the next four slip stitches into the back loop. Now I have five stitches on the hook, so I'm going to pull a loop through all five stitches. And now I'm going to chain five to create the foundation chain. Now I'm going to make a pico, so I'm going to chain three and slip stitch into the third chain from the hook. So here's what we have so far. Now I'm going to skip the next two stitches and single crochet into the remaining three stitches. And now I'm just going to slip stitch into that same stitch that I already worked into, the fifth of those slip stitches at the top of the head. Then I'll cut off my yarn, pull the tail to the back of the work, and sew in my ends. And as you can see, the top of this stem points towards the other side. And now I'm going to show you the last type of stem. Once again, I'm going to work into the top five stitches into the back loops. So I'm going to pull up a loop in the first stitch into the back loop, chain one. Then pull up a loop into each of the next four. So now I have five loops on my hook, so I'm going to pull a loop through all five. And now I'm going to chain five to make the foundation chain. Next, I'll chain two to count as the first stitch. Then I'll single crochet into the fourth stitch from the hook. And now single crochet into the remaining three chains. And now to finish, I'll slip stitch into the stitch that I already worked into, which was the fifth of those back loops. Then cut off the yarn, pull the tail to the back of the work, and sew in the ends. And this style of stem is a little bit more straight. Next, I'll show you how to make the leaves and vines. I'm going to use this pumpkin to show you how to make the leaves and vines. The trick to doing this is to use a padding cord, so I'm going to leave a long tail at the beginning of my work so that I can use that tail as a padding cord. So I'm going to pull up a loop wherever I want to put the vine. In this case, I think I'm going to stick the vine right here in the little tip of the stem. If you look at pictures of pumpkins, you'll notice that the vines will often be coming out of the sides or the top of the stem, but not really at the bottom. So just bear in mind that when placing yours. So I'm going to pull up a loop at the tip of the stem. And now as I work, I'm going to work around the padding cord so that all of my stitches are worked on top of it and I can pull the padding cord to shape the vine when I'm finished. So I'm going to chain 12, working back and forth around the padding cord. So chain one. And then I'm going to go to the other side of the cord, chain two. Then I'm going to go to the other side of the cord again, 
chain three, then go to the opposite side of the cord, four, other side of the cord, chain five, on the other side, chain six, and on the other side of the cord again, chain seven, chain eight, chain nine, chain 10, chain 11, and chain 12. Now I have all of my chains worked onto the padding cord, and you'll see that if I pull on this cord, I can cinch up all of those chains onto the cord. But I'm going to do that later. Next, I'm going to make the leaf. So to make the leaf, I'm going to chain one for the foundation chain. Then I'm going to make a pico by chaining three and slip stitching into the third chain from the hook. Now I'm going to single crochet into the next chain, the chain that was my foundation chain. This time I'm going to work around the padding cord again. So I'm going to put that cord behind my hook as I pull up a loop and single crochet. Now I'm going to just drop the cord and work another pico, so chain three, slip stitch into the third chain from the hook, and now I'm going to work another single crochet into the same stitch of the foundation chain for the leaf, again working around the padding cord. So, pull up a loop into that stitch, and single crochet. Now I'm going to repeat that three more times. Now you can see there's this really big gap in the middle of the leaf. We're going to fix that using the padding cord. So I'm just going to slip stitch into the chain right before I made the leaf again over the padding cord. I'm going to pull this open for a moment just so that I can finish with the leaf. And now I'm just going to pull on the padding cord to close up this loop. You can also pull on it a little bit more and then loosen it and tighten it as you want to get that vine to have a nice shape. Now I'm going to continue working chains around the padding cord to finish off the vine. So over the cord I'm going to chain 14. So I've done 14 chains. Now I could either make another leaf or I could end my vine which is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to drop the cord and I'm going to chain two more. Then I'll cut off the yarn And now I'm going to pull on the cord a little bit more to adjust the shape of the bottom of the vine. And you can just do this as you like it, just to get a nicely little coiled shape to happen in the vine. And once I'm happy with the shape that I've got, I can go ahead and sew in these ends, being particularly careful with the padding cord so that I don't alter the shaping that I just put in too much. And that's just going to fasten all the gathers in place. And now here is my little leaf and vine coming off of the top of the stem. Here's another one that I did where I placed the leaf and vine on the side of the stem, so you can see the different look that you get with putting the vine in a different spot. And now all of my little jack-o'-lantern appliques are finished. Let me know which one you liked best in the comments. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, press the like button and share it on social media. If you want to support the channel, you can join my Patreon at patreon.com slash fairyrings. You can find a link to my Patreon in the video description. Or if you'd like to support the channel in a different way, you can leave a super thanks right here on YouTube. You can also follow me or tag me to show me what you're working on on Instagram at LizFairy. If you want to see more videos like this in the future, subscribe to my channel and click the bell to receive notifications every time I post a new video. Let me know what Halloween projects you guys are working on in the comments, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!